Hello and welcome to my review of The Water Dancer by Ta Nehesi Coates. This book is set in Virginia in like the 1850s and it follows the character of Hiram Walker who is a slave on a Virginia farm and he decides one day that he wants to escape the only home that he's ever known. This book destroyed me. I spent the whole time I was reading this book with my nose glued to the page. The whole time, until the scene ended, then I would sit with my head in my hands trying to process all the emotional, social impact, all the... Oh, just... It's an intense read. It has possibly one of the best opening paragraphs I have ever read. The book starts and the first sentence is the middle of a thought. So we're catapulted into this book and all the social structures, everything has been established long before we ever got there. And in that first paragraph, we are introduced to so many things. We're introduced to Hiram's mum being sold. We are introduced to the land of Virginia, the farming land, being exhausted. We are introduced to the supreme importance of memory and location. And we're also introduced to how terrifying it is to be sold further down south. And it's all packaged into the first paragraph, which is just beautifully written and is amazing. And that first paragraph is really an indicator of how the rest of the book continues, which is just beautiful and heart-wrenching and everything in between. Early on, we're also introduced to all the social structures that are present within the book. And that is the quality, the low whites, the freed, and the tasked. And every time one of these titles is mentioned, the name is capitalized, so it really shows you as a reader how important these social structures are in this story, in this world, and how impossible it is to change them, because the titles are just capitalized. That's like, it's like God. So the quality are the supposed nobility. They are the plantation owners and they are the slave owners. And then there are the low whites, who are basically just all the other white people who don't have enough money or whatever to own slaves or own land or own any of their own thing. So they basically just do the bidding of the quality, no matter what, and instead of being like, no, we don't want to be your donkeys uh, doing your donkey work, they're like, okay, cool, we'll just take all the crumbs off your table as long as we can um, crush all the people who are less than us, just so we can feel like we've got some measure of control over our lives. Then there are the freed, who are former slaves who have been freed, but depending on where they live, they really don't have it much better than many of the tasked, who are the people who are still owned as slaves on plantations and still are owned by people and their lives are controlled by the whims of the quality. And we're also introduced very early on to the fact that Hiram has an almost perfect memory and that becomes a really major plot device character trait and also as a general theme for the book but all those things I will discuss in my next video and there were so many beautiful moments all throughout the book when the tasked were spending time with family or they were having a party or they were just living their lives and it wasn't that bad and they were having a good time but those beautiful moments were sometimes catastrophically just blown apart by the quality or by the low whites who just decided, no, nope, we're going to take away your family, we're going to take your friends, your husband, your wife, your children. And it just surprised you every time because you were following these characters who were living good lives on this farm. Nobody was being mistreated. And you were like, oh yeah, cool, this isn't so bad. But then these awful things would happen and then you'd remember these people are owned. They are not free. Nothing can be okay with that hanging over the whole society. And because of this, 
None of the characters smile. Hiram smiles a lot, but every time he meets a character, none of them smile at him. It's pointed out very specifically that this character said hello. They did not smile. And the only characters who smile are the ones who are too young or too naive to fully comprehend the awful situation that they're living in. I kept waiting the whole book, just waiting for that moment where Hiram was going to stop smiling. And I was like, no, don't happen, please. Coates doesn't rely on things like the big reveal or something really big and shocking to surprise you. The whole book is written as a memory from future Hiram's perspective, and he spends a lot of time meandering down memory lane or getting distracted, and he reveals elements out of sequence. So perhaps at the beginning of the chapter, we get revealed the the big thing that's going to happen at the end, and you're sitting reading the whole chapter just on tenterhooks, waiting for it to happen, and then the characters are having a nice time, but you know this thing is about to happen, and you're panicking, and then your face is getting closer and closer and closer to the book, and then you're... There was a lot of tension. What I found really interesting was the comparison between Hiram Walker, our main character, and Maynard Walker, who was almost our main antagonist in the first part of the book. And these two characters are brothers, they have the same dad from the quality, but Hiram's mum is from the task, and Maynard's mum is from the quality. And in the first part of the book, they spend a lot of time together, so you really get to understand their personalities and the contrasts that happen between them. So Hiram is intelligent, he's well-read, he's caring, and he's everything that a tasking person should not be in Virginia at this time. And then we have Maynard, who was born into the quality, but he is boorish, he is mean, he's stupid, and he's everything that a quality person should not be. So we have these two characters who are exhibiting traits that should not exist in their social classes, and this is really dangerous in the book because these elements threaten to subvert the really rigid social structures that are the only structures that allow slavery to continue. I was really stupid for a while when I was reading this book. The characters kept putting hi at the end of their dialogue, and I was like, oh, this must be like a weird Virginian slang type thing, kind of like y'all, but hi. So I was really confused until page 80, I think it was, and then I realised that hi was actually just short for Hiram, and they were just speaking to Hiram and just used a nickname. And we never get any particularly graphic details, so even though um, terrible things happen to Hiram, terrible things happen to the characters around him and his family, and that does get related, so we know that something terrible has happened, but we never get graphic detail about the what. We just know that something happened. So Coates is really sensitive in this aspect and he lets the characters keep their dignity and he lets them remain as human beings rather than just like, oh, poverty porn, slave porn. Oh, look, this person got whipped. Isn't that terrible? What he focuses on is the emotional impact that whatever the event was, had on the characters. And we really go through the emotions with the characters. There's an element of magic throughout the book, which for me, as somebody who reads a lot of sci-fi and fantasy, it felt really weird because I was waiting for the magic to become a bigger part of the story, to have more impact. But then I realised that magic in the book was actually being used as a metaphor in conjunction with memory to discuss how these two things could go together to create an impact on social change. But before I realised that, I spent a lot of time thinking, this is a bit weird, we've got a really hard-hitting story about somebody's child being sold and they never saw them again, and then in the next chapter we're doing some magic, but once you realise that the whole thing's a metaphor, then it makes a lot more sense and I was a lot more comfortable with 
all the magic that was going on. But I will talk about that in more detail in my next video. I think I said that already. And there were so many times where something happened and it was really awful and heartbreaking and all I could do was just like write down all my emotions. I d didn't have any more words than that. It was just like angry, sad, scared, oh my god. And that was all I could do because Coates' writing was just so emotionally impactful that I was speechless. Thank you for joining me in my review of The Water Dancer by Tana Hesse Coates. I hope you will join me in my next video where I will be discussing how memory functions as theme, character traits, plot devices, and a metaphor for the real world. But until that point, I will speak to you in the comments.